Growing up, I lived with my mom and my stepdad. My real dad was in the Marines, so he was constantly away. I also had an older sister. My mom was a drunk and my stepdad was either working at his dead-end job or high off of something. Sometimes he would hit her, but it was mostly just the two of them screaming their heads off at each other. When I was 10, my older sister committed suicide. She was 15. Everything got worse after that. I was alone all the time. My mom or my stepdad would fight more and my mom would get hit more often. At the funeral, my cousin and aunt told me if I wanted to live with her, I could. I knew my mother wouldn't go for it, so I politely declined. Fast forward to when I'm 12. My stepdad and mom were arguing over money, and he started beating the shit out of her. I was terrified. I had been watching a show on TV, and they were in the kitchen not far away. When he noticed me, he started shouting about if I wanted some too. I ran to my room and locked the door behind me, while he banged on my door, calling me all types of names. I shoved as many clothes as I could fit into my backpack and a few other things. Once my backpack was set, I put my savings, roughly $15 or so, in my pocket, opened my window, and ran. It was the afternoon, bright and sunny, and the only meal I had that day was breakfast. Naturally, I'm starved. I had this idea in my head of escaping to my aunt's, who lived in the next city over, but I had no clue how to get there. I just knew I couldn't stay home. I ended up at a diner and sat at the bar, feeling grown up and trying not to look suspicious. There was barely anyone there and this friendly older lady was my waitress. She seemed amused at first that I was trying to look grown up and order my own food and such, but she saw my backpack and kind of put two and two together. She asked me where I was headed and I told her my aunt's city. She commented that was a far walk, but I assured her I'd manage. This guy had been sitting close to me and he announced he'd drive me. The waitress and I looked at each other, then this guy. He was probably in his 30s, tall, and had a beard. He told me he needed to go three cities over and assured me I wouldn't be any trouble. Being stupid in 12, I agreed. The waitress was reluctant, but she told me to wait a second. While I waited, the guy said his name was John, and I told him mine. When she came back, she had a slice of apple pie wrapped up and her number written on the box. She even let me keep my money and said it was on the house. I thanked her, and then John and I left. He had a semi, and he helped me sit on the passenger seat before he came around and we were off. At first, we were silent, except for the radio, until he started asking me questions. When he questioned my age, I lied and said 15 because I thought I could pass for older, but his chuckle told me otherwise. I was wearing a little pink jacket with flowers on it, so that didn't help my older image any. He told me about his life on the road, how he had a wife but he didn't really love her, how lonely he was, just all this stuff and I was trying not to look freaked out. He asked if I had a boyfriend and I said no, and he reached over and touched my leg, telling me that was too bad and one day I'd want one. I remember that the most vividly how his large hand covered my thigh and how he started rubbing it just slightly. We drove in silence for a little while with him just rubbing my thigh area like that. I spotted a rest stop close enough to my destination and I begged him to pull over. He agreed and when I grabbed my backpack he was quick to ask why I was taking it. I just lied and said I had my period. He only chuckled and asked what my favorite candy was since he was going to get stuff from the vending machine while I used the restroom. Once in the restroom, I was freaking out, wondering how the heck I was going to get out of there. This old woman came in and saw me, obviously distressed, and when she asked me what was wrong, I just started bawling. Once I told her what had happened, she told me she'd drive me the rest of the way. Now, the good thing about these restrooms were that they had two exits. We went around back so he wouldn't see us, but we had to circle around to the front to get out. When we were circling, I saw him, standing in front of the restrooms, waiting for me. He even had candy in his hands. When he saw us, he practically ran to his truck, and I started crying again. I thought he was going to follow us and do who knows what to us. He was behind us for a couple of minutes, but he ended up not following us, thankfully. When we got to my aunt's, the old woman told her what had happened, and I ended up giving her my apple pie. I know it was stupid, but I still look out for him when I pass by truckers no matter where I'm at. Ever since I met the creepy truck driver, I watch what I wear in my neighborhood and around the area of my neighborhood. This happened a few months ago in March of 2016. 
This is very clear and recent. One day in March, I left my house because I needed to take the bus in order to get to my classes. I didn't like what I was wearing and I already walked up a big hill in my neighborhood and almost about out of it. I decided to call my boyfriend and ask him to bring a pair of sweatpants because I felt uneasy with my outfit and it gave me a bad feeling. Within five minutes of hanging up the phone with my boyfriend, a white truck drives slowly behind me. When I turned around to see who it was, the driver drove slowly next to me. This is how the conversation went with the creep truck driver. Hello. You look very gorgeous and I just wanted to let you know. Do you need a ride? Considering I didn't like what I was wearing, this made me feel like a prostitute, but I politely declined stating that I have a ride. Are you sure? Because you look cold. I politely declined again, stating it was alright and I'll be fine. After the second try, he gave up. Or so I thought. I immediately called my boyfriend and told him to stay on the phone with me until I at least got on the bus. When I turned the corner to walk down a street to get to the bus stop, I saw garden workers and in front of their truck was the creepy truck driver, parked, waiting for me. When I got close enough to his truck once again, he asked me if he can give me a ride, using the same excuse about it being cold outside. I politely declined for the third time. Once I got on the bus, I hung up the phone with my boyfriend and I called my best friend. And as I was explaining what happened, I noticed the creepy truck driver following the bus. He followed the bus for about 15 minutes until the bus broke down and police came out to the bus for a different reason. A second bus came so I did end up making it safe to school. A week after the creepy truck driver tried to get me into his car, my parents went to see a show and my brother was working, so I was home alone with my dog. An hour after my parents left, I heard my dogs going crazy, the doorbell ringing non-stop, and lots of knocking. I looked out the window and it's the stupid truck driver. He didn't see me though, because I peeped through the blinds. By the time I called my neighborhood patrol, he was gone, but they watched my house for a few days. Thinking that was the last straw because now it's May in 2016, nothing happened for a good few months until last week when I was with my best friend walking to Taco Bell. We noticed a red truck driving very slowly, and I looked at the driver, and guess who? It's the stupid creepy truck driver, and he just smiled and waved with his new truck. I don't know how he knew where I lived, or how he knew which way I took the bus. And that gives me chills. At the time, I was working for a steel pipe processing plant as a receiver. Trucks with 40 foot long pipes would come in and it was my job to offload them with a giant forklift. First though, I had to collect the BOL from the driver. BOL stands for Bill of Lading. It's a shipment document that has information about what's on the load, where it's going and where it's from. So I would retrieve the BOL from the trucker and I would compare the sheet to the cargo and sign off on it, if everything checks out. I would see a lot of the same drivers on a regular basis. I got a lot of joking comments on how I looked too young to be driving a machine that size. A few of them asked me out, but I'm married, and most of the guys respected that. So when I encountered a new driver from one of the trucking companies, it really didn't surprise me when one of the very first, if not the first thing he said to me was, How old are you? 23, I replied with a half-hearted chuckle. Are you married? I'm engaged, so pretty much. I replied, starting to get reasonably uneasy about this guy. Not wanting to make small talk or answer any more increasingly personal questions from this guy, I asked him for the BOL. Anything for you, sexy girl. Uh, excuse me, what did you just call me? It's really sexy to see a girl like you driving a big truck. Now, I'm a bit of a hothead. I need to stand up for myself in situations like this, or else I risk becoming a welcome mat for this kind of attention. He hands me the paperwork with a trademark creepy grin, like he was getting off on the fact that I was within grabbing distance from him. Listen, old man, as I snatch the paperwork out of his hand. I do not come to work to be spoken to like that. I'm here for a paycheck, not a date. What? It was just a compliment. Don't be like that, sexy girl. Don't fucking call me or say anything to me that you wouldn't say to any of the male co-workers. I have a fucking name, and it's not fucking smart to talk to anyone like that before you know what it is. I bet it's bitch. I signed off on his shit, dropped his copy in the mud, and went over to the other driver waiting in line, took his paperwork, and made Creeper wait about 30 minutes, offloading two other trucks before I got to his. We have a safety rule that the driver must be inside the truck while it's being offloaded. So I took this opportunity to be a bigger bitch. 
laid on the horn off my truck and angrily yelled at him to get in your fucking truck. After I offloaded him, I went to my supervisor and told him what had happened. Not a formal complaint, but to make him aware of everything that transpired and to let him know that the driver might end up complaining to his supervisors about how long it took me to see him. My supervisor sided with me. He knows that if I lost my shit on someone, they deserved it. He knew about a few other incidents prior, so he was supportive. He told me to report anything else the guy does that's fucked up and said he'd be willing to send someone else over to deal with that particular driver, if and when he brought another load. Later on that day, he made a funny comment about how sexy I looked in my uniform. Oversized overalls, grease-stained high-vis hoodie, boots, and a hard hat? I didn't wear makeup or perfume to work. I looked like and was mistaken for one of the guys on a few other occasions, so the creeper must have been thinking, oh my god, a girl, must say nasty shit. Anyway, I thought I made things pretty clear to the creeper, and that he wasn't going to bother me anymore. Nevertheless, I wasn't keen on the idea of having to walk up to his cab to get the paperwork from him again. The next day, guess who shows up with the new load? I call over the radio. My favorite driver is here. Can someone come grab his paperwork? A couple minutes go by, and one of the co-workers I get along with well drives up in his smaller tow motor to approach the driver for his BOL. I wait off to the side and take the opportunity to have a smoke next to my machine. While I wait for my coworker to come back with his paperwork, he comes back, and of course he wants to scoop on everything that happened the day before. I guess the driver asked why I wasn't there to collect the BOL. Coworker told him I was busy. Meanwhile, I was having a smoke in clear view. In no hurry to offload the asshole, I told coworker what had transpired, when suddenly my coworker interrupted me. Uh, don't look, but I think he's taking pictures of you. Of course, my head whipped around, and sure enough, Buddy was holding his phone up pointing it at me, taking pictures, I assume. I scurried up into my machine and got on the radio for my supervisor. Favorite driver is taking pictures of me. 10-4. I'll call security. Don't offload him. Given the nature of what we do and why we do it, there's strict security guidelines at this place. Once a month, we had bomb sniffer dogs inspect the property. It was that big of a deal. So even if he wasn't taking pictures of me, he had no business taking pictures on that property. Security shows up and I watch as the driver hands him his phone. My coworker was there with him and later told me that the guy said he was just trying out his new phone. Bullshit, but whatever. They didn't find photos of me or the property on his phone, but he had a few minutes to delete them. Either way, he was barred from the property and my supervisor reported him and what had happened the day before to my driver's employer. I never saw him again, but the story doesn't end there. A few weeks later, another driver from the same company nice guy that I had good rapport with, filled me in on my favorite driver. Your buddy got canned. Oh, that's too bad. I'm gonna miss him. Yeah, he was on thin ice because the girls in the office were getting weird vibes from him, always hanging around the offices way more than necessary. Nothing to fire him over, though, but his police check came in. Turns out he has prior sexual assaults on his record. Oh, lovely. Okay, so this happened to me last night. It was 11.30 p.m. or somewhere around there. This highway was under construction, one lane and two concrete walls of either side of me. There's a truck in front of me, and I cannot see past him. We're going about 70 miles an hour, and there are no vehicles behind me. He locks his brakes in front of me, and so I stop. I think nothing of it. I just thought another vehicle stopped in front of him. So we continue on our merry way, and we stop again. I still think nothing of it, due to the fact that I cannot see past him. The road widens to two lanes, shoulder and regular. I pull into the shoulder to see past him, but there isn't anybody in front of him. I pull back into my lane, and he stops yet again, and I thought that was weird. A few minutes of this, and he begins weaving in between the two lanes. He stops, and I stop. I grab my phone at this point, and I dial 911. But I do not press the call button, as the truck in front of me begins moving again. Now. I own a Volvo racing vehicle, so whenever I get into a situation like this, I put one hand on the steering wheel, one switching gears manually. So I set my phone down to get up to speed. We get up to about 70, and I pick up my phone. He breaks at this point, and my phone goes flying across the car. I didn't click call yet. My phone is in the floorboard somewhere. He starts again, I start again. He stops again for a few seconds, and he starts yet again, getting up to about 50 before he stops again. At this point, I think that if there is a car behind me, and if they rear-end me, I go underneath this truck in front of me, and that scares me quite a bit. 
Now I understand that you are wondering why I didn't pass him. I attempted it multiple times while stopped, and he immediately picked up speed and crossed into the lane I was attempting to pass him in. He starts yet again, and I start yet again. We get up to 70, I gain the courage to pass him, and I get halfway up his truck about three-fourths of the trailer I pass, before he rapidly turns to the right. Not slowly and gradually, but quite fast, so I slam on my brakes, and I cannot slow any faster. If he hits me, I go into the concrete wall and go airborne, so I'm trying to avoid that. I'm about an inch away from taking out my left view mirror. I was that close to the wall. His back tires just barely missed me. They were a couple of inches away. Thank God I hadn't gone any faster, and thank God I didn't make it any closer to the cab, for if I did, I wouldn't have been able to type this up. I'm quite sure that his goal was to kill me. I pass him about a minute later, for it splits into three lanes.